San Francisco Zoo and Gardens was forced to close due to COVID, we didn't know what was in store for us. All we knew was that no matter if we were opened or closed, our over 2,000 animals still needed to be fed and cared for, as we do 365 days a year. Here's the thing. San Francisco Zoo and Gardens rarely ever closes, and if so, it's because of very severe weather. We are one of the few places in the Bay Area that is literally open every single day. So as days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months, you can imagine that our animals would have noticed the sudden change in foot traffic. And we made lemonade out of lemons. The closure gave our staff a unique opportunity to spend time with the animals they cared for. Some of our dedicated staff are here to talk about our changes in animal behaviors and how they took advantage of this uninterrupted time. Here we are a year later, but a year ago, we didn't know what to expect when we were closed to the public. During that time, we learned a lot about our animals and they showed us a lot of interesting behaviors. We were also able to accomplish goals that we hadn't been able to do before because we were closed and took advantage of no people being around. So when the COVID-19 shutdown uh, affected the San Francisco Zoo, we kept a close eye on all of our big cats here because they were used to seeing uh, lots of people every single day. And that's a lot of visual and auditory stimulation for them. So we kept a close eye on them. Uh, fortunately, we didn't really see any changes in their behavior. Um, one thing that we thought was quite interesting was one of our tigers in particular, her name is Leanne. She became quite interactive with uh, the keeper staff as well as any zoo staff that walked by her exhibit during the day uh, in a positive way. I think she was seeking out interaction with us, maybe wondering where everyone went. Um, but especially when she was in our exhibit A with the side windows, she was really interactive with us in that space, which was actually really fun to see. Um, previously, she would always acknowledge us walking by, but now she would run over, she would check us out, she would lie down there, hang out with us. So that was really awesome to see. Um, other cats, they all just seemed to keep going on as normal. Um, so we were fortunate that no one seemed to uh, be too disturbed by the fact that all of a sudden we had no visitors here. Here at the Jones Family Preserve, where our Western Lowland gorillas live, uh, they definitely noticed a change when we went into secure in place and stopped having visitors present. Uh, our silverback Oscar spends quite a bit of time um, sitting near the windows and watching visitors as they watch him. And suddenly overnight, we went from having a lot of visitors to zero visitors. He was pretty unnerved by this. Uh, we saw a big increase in patrolling the outer um, edge of his yard. And we also saw him climb to the, climbing to the highest point of his rockwork and scanning the horizon, trying to figure out where the visitors went. As keepers, we were unable to explain to him what was going on in the outside world. Um, so it was a little eerie for all of us, even the zookeepers. But after about a week, we started to see him relax and accept it a bit more. To help him and the other um, gorillas in our group adjust to this change, we did a variety of foraging options and tried to keep them busy. And uh, staff throughout the zoo would come eat their lunches at our visitor windows so Oscar would be able to see some people in his day. I think uh, now that we're getting back to normal, all of us are feeling a lot better about it, and Oscar is definitely enjoying having visitors back coming to see him every day. All right, hi, my name is Livia. I'm one of the animal keepers here, and this is Katie. She's training the rhino. So while we uh, were under lockdown uh, due to the pandemic, uh, it was really quiet for a while, and you know, a lot of the animals sort of noticed that people were gone. They started to show a lot more interest in us as keepers. Uh, so we decided to use that opportunity uh, to train them for some more complex behaviors. So Boone, since he became a lot more um, interested in us, we started working on foot behaviors. So we're getting him to present his foot on this block um, so that we can potentially work on, um, you know, filing his toenails and, you know, just making sure that everything is okay with his feet health-wise. Um, so it's a really good way for us to build a good relationship with him and a good rapport and keep him entertained during this, you know, difficult time period. So he's definitely glad to have you guys back. Um, but we're going to keep up with this training to make sure that he gets all the care that he needs.
one thing that never changed was our staff's dedication and commitment to animal care and wellness during this time. Hi, during our closure, we actually had our rambunctious two-year-old. He was pretty active um, and without the guest, as you guys know, he really likes all the guest experiences and he likes interacting with you guys. So when he didn't have you, he kind of changed his focus to the females, which isn't always the positive situation. Um, so just during the closure without the people, we asked a lot of the zookeepers and staff to just kind of walk by, just kind of hang out, check in on him. And then we upped our enrichment game up by a lot. He got a lot more Kongs, he got a lot more toys that we put on exhibit, a lot of new enrichment that was installed. Um, if you guys stop by, you might hear a lot of clanking noises. That's his newest favorite toy. It's just a bunch of metal bowls put together, but it's like a wind chime. So that's something that we had to do with him. And we also offered them indoor access during this time. So they actually got to hang out with the keepers a lot more than they usually do. So during the shutdown, we were able to focus quite a bit more on our animals. So for example, here in the children's zoo, we were able to train 50 new behaviors. One of those behaviors here was Rosa learned to receive a voluntary injection. But we're really excited for when you guys come back to see all the new and wonderful things that a lot of the animals here at the Children's Zoo learn. When we first shut down, the zoo was extremely quiet, and we think the giraffes actually enjoyed the peace. But after a little while, they started to wonder where you guys were. So we were able to use that quiet time to catch up on lots and lots of extra enrichment and training with our giraffes. Uh, one of the things that we worked really hard on with the giraffes is voluntary foot care. So we're going to show you a little bit about that today um, with Batiti, one of our older females who's learning to put her foot on a bale of straw to allow us safe access to the bottom of her feet for trimming. During our closure, as our animal staff cared for our over 2,000 animals, our veterinary staff, nutritionists, wellness teams, horticulturists, and maintenance staff were all here for our animals. And even without guests, the staff created exciting, engaging, and interesting enrichment and treats to celebrate individual animals' birthdays, recognize designated animal days like World Chimpanzee Day, and even treated animals to a visit by the Easter Bunny. We connected our fans and followers by sharing the celebrations on social media, so even if they could not be here in person, they could still keep up with their favorite animals.